Uh, we're very pleased to welcome uh, Sir Paul Nurse, um, who joins us from the uh, Francis Crick uh, Institute, where he is director. He's a former president of the Royal Society uh, and uh, a winner of the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine uh, in 2001. Uh, we're very pleased to have you here today uh, with us at all. Uh, and we've got Steve Bates, who's the chief executive of the Bio Industry Association uh, in this country. And he's also chair of the International Council uh, of Biotech Associates. Uh, thank you very much indeed for uh, joining us. Uh, my colleagues will have some questions, but let me uh, kick off with some questions to uh, Sir Paul. Um, so Paul, the, the government's strategy on testing, which is the, the subject of our uh, evidence session today, uh, was to, to start with the Public Health England laboratories uh, and then extend that to hospitals. Uh, and then on the, uh, on the 2nd of April uh, last week, uh, the Health Secretary uh, announced a, a five-pillar plan, of which the fifth pillar uh, was to, and I quote, to explore uh, increasingly decentralised uh, models of testing. Um, now, uh, Sir Paul, you talked uh, memorably uh, on the radio about uh, a Dunkirk-style effort, um, and you said, uh, we are a lot of little boats, and the little boats can be effective. The government has put in some big boats, destroyers in place, that's a bit more cumbersome to get working, and we wish them all the luck to do that, but we little boats can contribute uh, as well. Uh, can you, I don't think of the, the Crick uh, Institute as a little boat by any means, um, but uh, can you uh, say what your institution is contributing uh, to, the, to the national effort? Um, we can't hear Sir Paul. Oh, um, oh, I right. asked the last part of the question because the internet is fluctuating. I do... I apologize for that. No problem, I'll try again. Um, so- Hear me. Uh, I can, we can hear you, uh, can you hear? A, a bit intermittently, but we can at the moment, so we'll persevere. Um, I was reflecting on the, the approach that was taken, um, which was to be a fairly centralized approach on Public Health England laboratories until quite recently. Uh, and then you memorably said that the little boats uh, could make a contribution. Uh, and the Crick uh, is uh, is one of those boats. I, I wouldn't call it little, but can you tell us what what you're doing and how you're contributing to the testing effort? Yes, I can. Thank you for the opportunity of speaking to you. Um, about three weeks ago, we decided at the Crick that testing would be important, that particularly testing of healthcare staff would be critical, um, right from doctors through to um, those driving the ambulances, and we thought that our what would be moderate resources would be best equipped by helping um, those more locally um, getting healthcare workers um, back to uh, to work. So we are a research laboratory, of course, and we repurposed ourselves um, to do testing at a moderate scale. Now you ask about the <laughs> destroyers and the little ships. Um, obviously, it has to be right to have big facilities. Um, but the difficulty with big facilities is getting them to work quickly. Uh, um, if they had been planned a year or two ago, if there had been um, resource put there to uh, test it out, and there's a lot of things that have to be tested, then one could imagine they would have been put in place uh, rapidly. But we did think it would be a, a slower process given the complexity of it. So we um, tried to get ours going, um, which, we, which we have, um, and then perhaps that can act as a, an example for others elsewhere in the country so that although we are relatively small, I mean, we may get up to 2,000, possibly more actually, uh, a day in the, in the long term that is small. Um, if we could get more um, uh, places like us, both in the academic public sector and also in the private sector, then that would complement um, the big um, mega labs which are being set up in three places in the UK. So I think that was the logic behind why we did it. And did you volunteer to do it or were you asked to do it? We volunteered to do it and three weeks ago I uh, emailed um, uh, 10 Downing Street, a spad in 10 Downing Street so that they would be aware of what we were doing. Um, I don't think we got a reply, um, but uh, uh, we did inform them. There's been some informal discussions with the Office of Life Sciences, not involving um, me, but actually um, things have got much more 
useful in the last week because since we made our announcement and now we're working much more closely with the Department of Health and um, and of course all the time I should uh, have said with University College London Hospital and their diagnostic services we've done it together which is extremely helpful and I think there are lessons to be learned there and they may even be lessons for the mega labs because it's not just a question of getting laboratory facilities in place that's important but it's also a question of getting um, the workflow operating well the workflow from hospitals the through the regulatory issues these are all very complicated and if you're going to have a, a mega centralized lab you have to solve all those problems um, we've sold them locally, but they will have to be sold on a national scale for the mega labs to work. And it does take time. It does take effort. Uh, thank you, Spall. There, there, there was um, initially uh, a request that was made for, for labs in universities and other settings uh, to, to loan their testing equipment uh, to the, the central uh, labs. Um, was that requested of the of the CRIC? Yes, indeed it was. I should have mentioned that. That was done at the same time as we were deciding to do something ourselves. Um, and we lent all the machines that they requested. They were uh, the they only wanted a particular type of machine, presumably to make it work best in their circumstances. Um, and we had other machines they didn't want, which we're using for our analyses um, now. So well, and we also, I ought to say, I should say one other thing. We also asked for volunteers from our staff. We got over 300 volunteers within 24 hours and offered those uh, volunteers who might have needed some training, of course, though were uh, skilled in laboratory terms, um, to support in any way that might be required. And we did that at that time as well. well one of the reasons for, uh, for this line of inquiry is so that we can learn lessons uh, during the course of this uh, crisis that might be applied and uh, and obviously what we what we're engaging on here is whether in effect a, a centralized model in which you uh, you ship your machines to a, uh, a big lab at the request of the government uh, or whether you operate your machines with your people and expertise locally uh, is the uh, is a better model do you have any reflections on that or, or should one mm. combine the two or emphasize one or the other what, what, what do you say well i think at this moment the right course of action should have been to combine the two because um, we were working against the clock um, had this all been planned before one two three years ago and the mega labs had a, a clear way of operating then that might have been the most efficient way to go forward but you have to solve a number of problems I don't think those problems were solved and therefore just to rely on a mega lab approach, I suspect wasn't the wisest course of action um, because um, we're all having to work so much more against the clock. Um, now, I mean, we're a bit late now really because I mean, in London we're getting up to the peak and um, we, we need all the facilities we can. But I should say that we at the Crick have got protocols. We can tell people where things haven't worked very well. And it may be that others can get going a bit quicker than, than we could. So I think the short answer is for now, we need both. Hopefully the little boats won't be required once the mega labs are going. But if we're just waiting for them to get going and it is difficult to get them going, then I think we, we, we definitely can help in some way. Well, you'll make a, an important contribution, but I, uh, I take what you said, that um, if you'd been able to contribute a bit earlier, then actually you could be contributing more during the peak, uh, as well as what we hope will be uh, afterwards as well. And that's important to, uh, to understand. Uh, let me ask uh, a couple of questions uh, of Steve Bates, and then I'll turn to, uh, to my colleagues. Um, uh, and perhaps uh, just like my question to Sir Paul, uh, Steve, uh, what is the what's the role of the the bio industry in, um, uh, in making a contribution to the flotilla of little ships? So I think we've seen the government effort, the national effort on this, go into hyperspeed in the last week, and we've really spent our time uh, organising uh, uh, the goodwill of the sector, uh, both those who are traditionally involved in the diagnostics industry uh, and those who want to come alongside and help uh, into that national effort. And I think we've already seen. In the last few days big changes the announcement this morning from astrazeneca and gsk that they are working with the university of cambridge on a new testing lab we've already seen uh, many uh, companies as well as universities give up the particular type of kit that is the backbone of the na new national centers 
uh, and we've uh, worked today to make sure that the detailed understanding of the standards by which if you want to bring a, a, a little ship alongside the national effort, you need to be able to dock and how you may do that through an understanding of standards. The other thing that's happening is there is innovation within the processes, both in Public Health England, uh, within, um, uh, within uh, companies uh, and within NHS labs as to how they run this test. We're making sure that best practice innovation is spread rapidly so people can work at pace uh, in a very difficult situation. Uh, thank you, Sufi. Um, you, you were nodding. I don't think people would have seen uh, when Sir Paul was saying that actually if you'd started a bit earlier, then you could have made a contribution uh, earlier. Is that what Sir Paul said about the, uh, the research sector? Um, you were indicating applies also, I think, to, to the industry sector. Is that, is that if I interpreting your body language correctly? The industry has always supported the diagnostics infrastructure in the NHS for a number of years. Uh, and to the extent to which the NHS has sought to buy these things from the private sector, the private sector has, uh, has been supportive of the infrastructure that's been built in the country. Um, and there's some excellent companies doing that, whether that be Thermo Fisher, whether that be Roche, whether that be Randox or, or, or others, have always been part of the scene. Uh, I think what we've seen is uh, a willingness to support and really in a sense is the Thermo Fisher backbone and the Randox backbone that are making the difference in the national hubs. They have been commissioned uh, relatively recently. And in the last week, we've seen uh, a real ramping up again of the desire to engage everybody and, and only in the last couple of days, really specific details and plans as to what people need in terms of antigen testing. We're talking about the test here, swab testing for, um, uh, for people who to, who've got the virus. Uh, I can talk separately about the antibody test. You may want to come to that later. Uh, thank you. I'm going to uh, turn to our colleague, uh, Aaron Bell, uh, in a minute, but just to... Uh, ask your assessment of one of the concerns that's been raised, not least by the government, which is about uh, a, an alleged shortage of uh, the reagents that are necessary to uh, significantly increase the, uh, the manufacture of test kits. Um, is that something that your members are experiencing? I think it's a bit like the toilet rolls. In one sense, if there's not something uh, where you need it in the place that you need it, you believe that there's a shortage, but actually, in fact, there is plenty of supply of some of this uh, or it's able to be made uh, by, by other people. So I think it's a logistical challenge. Uh, and some of these are things that need to be in the right format. They are packaged in, uh, in particular kits to go into particular machines. Uh, so I think there are pinch points on this. And I think uh, that that is understandable uh, as uh, volumes are increasing very rapidly. Uh, supply chains are adapting to that, but there are pinch points. But I don't think that there is a fundamental problem with the capacity to make reagent in the long term. Within this country you're talking about, are they, it can be contained within this country. We've got supplies that if, if it all uh, slots together, you can produce the, the necessary test kits um, without a problem um, once the, the links have been made within this country over the next few weeks. The things that go in the machines can take up to have up to 70 parts in them. Some of those are plastic, some of those are consumables and disposables. Some of those are reagents. Uh, I, I'm not pledging that everything can be done easily within the UK supply chain, but the UK does have reagent manufacturing. It does have some of the plastics manufacturing. Uh, most of this has been built in a global supply chain and we have confidence that global suppliers will be able to supply of what they promised. But this is a thing that everywhere in the world wants immediately. Well, there's no good having something with 70 parts if, um, if the last two are missing. Um, you need to have them all there. So to be confident that the tests are going to work, can you be, can you give us any indication of your assessment of the, of getting all of the components uh, in place, either through availability or a bit like the ventilator challenge, getting people who previously didn't make these, um, these components, whether uh, chemicals or in the case of swabs and things, physical uh, components, uh, can, they, can they be repurposed? I've discovered in the last week just how innovative the people who run labs, public and private, can be, as Paul's team at the Crick have shown. I think that where there's a will, there's a way, uh, and some of these may be able to be more easily adapted with different steps or different processes or different kits. It'll probably be easier on some machines than others, and probably uh, there will be uh, rate-limiting steps on some that are bigger than others. Uh, it depends on the specifics, and I know that there's a very detailed request from the DH for the priority areas that has been signalled very clearly to the market and to the private sector in the last uh, day or so. 
is there a relevant lesson to be learned for the future management of this pandemic? And we're, we're keen to, uh, to, to learn lessons that can be usefully applied, that to anticipate production that's needed later in the crisis, best to get ahead of it. Obviously, vaccine production comes to mind. I mean, it seems to me from what you said and, and what Sir Paul said, if we had more test kits available now, that would have been useful. Should we be making sure in anticipation of the need, we have, for example, vaccine manufacturing facilities? Well, if I can pay testament to some of the work that you yourself have been involved in in recent years, a part of the UK's uh, life science industrial strategy, investments have been made by the UK state that will be very helpful uh, in building uh, a vaccine manufacturing capability. Uh, these are around the country, they link to the private sector uh, as well, and a great consortium of BIA members have uh, made proposals which have been adopted by uh, Sir Patrick Valance and uh, the, the UK government, which anticipate exactly this, the need to manufacture. The time for use during this crisis? We hope so. If candidates emerge for vaccines from either uh, the Jenna in terms of the adenovirus or perhaps the more novel approach of the mRNA approach, we believe that we've uh, linked and coordinated the UK's capability in this, of which there is some, but I wouldn't say it is everything to do everything at scale. But there is capacity and that has been linked and is uh, being invested in and being organised, ready to go, should a vaccine a candidate become available. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Aaron Bell. Thank you, Chair. Um, to both the uh, witnesses, if I may, uh, the Times reported that the newly appointed uh, government advisor on testing, Professor John Newton, thought that, quote, companies who are offering their capacity, uh, end quote, for testing, again, quote, might not be as helpful at the moment. It seems that you both sort of fundamentally disagree with that. Uh, is it that, that it's not necessarily a capacity question, but to speak to a little bit of what um, Mr. Bates said, it's about the agility and the innovation that those companies can offer? Uh, and secondly, to both of you as well, just to what extent you thought the whole UK was sufficiently prepared for the level of testing that is now required, and if there's any lessons we need to learn from that. But if I could go to Mr Bates first. So I found that um, the NHS and PHE have been very, very uh, welcoming of opportunity from companies uh, to, to support. I think there is, a, uh, there is a question about how easy it is to dock into processes, because it's not just bringing your lab on board. You've got to make sure that you've got samples coming in and the data can go out the other side. You've got to mesh in, if you like, when you, when you arrive. Uh, and that is more easy for companies that are uh, close to industrial or NHS processes than it is that perhaps uh, have got some machines and are working on research. So uh, we're, we're linking that together. And I, and I think that that may, may be the thinking that was there. I think on your point around what is needed, um, it's clear that in the last week, uh, we've, uh, we've understood that the challenge of antibody testing, uh, these are the tests that may be able to detect antibodies, is a knottier scientific problem than we first thought. Uh, Professor Sir John Bell has helpfully outlined some of those challenges in a blog, and there are scientific papers around that that now enable everybody who can work in this research space to work on it. Uh, but I think that that will be uh, the thing that we need to be able to scale, but we don't have the capacity yet because we don't have the answer yet. Thank you. And, and Sir Paul, the same to you. Um, first, um, uh, we, we at the Crick are doing testing, but we've also repurposed a number. I think we are losing Sir Paul again. Um, so, can you hear us, um, Sir Paul? The I think we've got a we've got a problem with the sound. We'll try and come back to you if uh, if we can to to answer Aaron's question. Can I turn to Carol Monaghan? Carol. Hello, Carol. Thank you, Chair. And my, my question was for Steve. Anyway, I mean, you you talked about the difficulties in accessing patient samples, and I've had companies getting in touch and uh, raising that particular issue. What can government do in order to make these infected samples more available to companies that are working to produce diagnostic tests? How can we support for um, NHS staff? Um, because you don't want people, uh, staff on the wards or picking up um, patients if they're COVID positive. So that's a critical thing. We do have to test 
care workers. And I think that's really got to get out there very, very um, fast. There are a lot of rules, a lot of regulations, a lot of practices. You have to cut your way through them. Um, it is difficult to do. I think that um, what we can learn locally will be helpful for the bigger labs because they will have to solve the same problems. They will be different in different places and um, you do have to get through them. You can get through them, but if I was to say it's a lot of effort and um, my um, colleagues at the Crick have had to do an enormous amount of work to get samples in. And uh, as a, 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 a if I was to say that the practices that are suitable for peacetime are not always quite the practices that are suitable for wartime, and we are in war at this moment. I know I keep turning to military metaphors, but it does seem useful to cutting through this stuff. Chair, if I can answer Carol's question. Please. Um, so the uh, so, so two points. Uh, first of all, I think we should be under no illusion of the centrality of Scottish life science firms and capability for the UK effort. They are fundamental and there are really big sites uh, that are vital for the whole of the UK uh, based in Scotland. I think in terms of uh, getting uh, companies to be able to get access to samples, I think there's, there's two questions here. One is um, where, uh, where people are trying to do research to get something to work, which perhaps is not yet ready for industrialization, but they are seeking access to the, to the data. Uh, obviously this is a new disease and they need access to perhaps uh, uh, blood. I th think that uh, the UK uh, Clinical Trials Network have built uh, a fantastic network, another piece of infrastructure built very effectively over the last uh, 10 years through a life science industrial strategy, so that the Nightingale hospitals do have a clinical trial infrastructure. You see the adaptive trial out of the University of Oxford, uh, and I think also the, the PHE approach to, uh, to doing the, the surveillance screening and some of the data that will come out of that will enable companies to uh, to share uh, for, from some great science coming from the UK. I know most companies will want the individual uh, bloods uh, as quickly as possible for their own particular project. That is a challenge to do in a very, very fast moving environment. But I know that where, uh, where this can be linked into clinical trial work, there is desire to do it. And, and perhaps also uh, there can be uh, local facilities where, where people work on that. Thank you very much. Uh, Darren Jones and then Jeremy Hunt. Thank you, uh, Chair. Um, I'm interested in, in some of the points that you've made today about the lack of agreed strategy at the beginning of this pandemic between a centralised and decentralised approach to testing. And I'm conscious that in the health service, you know, we do stress testing to look at how many ventilators we need and what capacity we have for these types of scenarios. Could you just um, tell the committee if we do similar stress testing from a testing perspective, uh, and if so, whether there had been recommendations before this arrived about which approach we ought to have taken? Um, I'm not familiar with this. I have to admit to you being a, a research laboratory. Um, I, I suspect we weren't prepared enough. I think there was an NHS um, test of how we would respond to a pandemic about three years ago. I'm not familiar with it, but I'm told that um, there were issues as a consequence of that. So you'll have to ask the experts um, about where we were on that, and I can't provide an answer. But um, certainly there were um, a, a, a tests that were carried out on the system some time ago, and maybe there were lessons that should have been learned from that. But you'll need to ask somebody else to get a response on it. I'm sorry, I don't know. All right, so to Jeremy and then uh, Zara. Thank you, Chair. Um, just a quick question for both Paul and Steve. Um, 100,000 tests a day by the end of this month, which is uh, three weeks and two days away. Um, obviously, it's a very important statement of ambition, but given what we know now about the difficulty of antibody tests and the fact they're unlikely to work by then, do you think it is a, an important stretch target or something we could actually achieve in that short period of time? I think industry is going as fast as it can. I believe that uh, that now the the supplemental work of the of the the smaller ships coming alongside PHE and NHS uh, will, will will help with that. I believe that the uh, we had a good update today from the the central labs, and uh, if they can get to a position where they can get uh, volunteer communities to help them with second shifts and go over overnight and through the night, uh, then everybody will do everything they can 
uh, to give the UK the capacity uh, that's been set out as the target. Um, obviously, we all have to work together to try and achieve what has to be achieved. Um, 100,000 is a stretch, though. It is a stretch. Sort of. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you. This is for both Steve and Sir Paul. Thank you for talking to us about the benefits of an approach that brings together mega labs and smaller labs. I want to ask whether there are any risks to a more open, decentralised approach for testing, for example, working at home, work, uh, for example, at work or in, in, in the home, as announced in the government's five pillar plan for testing. I don't think there are any um, particular risks for individuals in terms of the way that uh, a test would be taken. I think that they are, you've seen uh, the, the, the procedures that are used in the IKEA car parks, and uh, I believe that they are uh, properly uh, overseen by, uh, by the NHS uh, to make sure that uh, the staff conducting those are, are doing that properly. If we were to, through a research programme, get to something which you could take as a, a similar to a DNA swab at home to show that you had had the virus, that would be ideal. We are, I'm afraid, some distance from that, but that would be unchallenging in the way that DNA swabbing is used by police. But that's a that's a holy grail at the moment, not a not a realistic prospect in uh, in in the, in the immediate weeks. What I can say is that we are also setting up the Crick um, drive-in and walk-in facilities uh, um, to be able to uh, diversify our help to the um, national um, health service, and we are also experimenting in different ways of, uh, of, of making these tests um, and some look promising and if they are working then I think we'll be able to make a contribution there too. Uh, I have a feeling what we're going to get through this largely by lots of different efforts coming together and looking for best practice and it is something that is perhaps not the way that um, uh, large organizations normally operate because they have to have proper processes in place and so on and 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 that's only proper but probably in this particular situation it's going to require a somewhat looser organization mm -hmm. uh, a listening organization listening to what everybody is doing and maybe accommodating different approaches rather than monolithic approaches i i think that's probably going to be the best way forward you're a biologist, uh, a very distinguished one, uh, Sir Paul, and um, uh, you seem to be advancing an uh, approach that is rather adaptive and rather more biological than, than mechanical uh, in this. Do you think that that's the, the right approach, that we should allow different approaches to be uh, to develop during the course of the crisis? Well, I'm absolutely sure that the mega lab approach is the right one in the long run. Um, what I think is in helping them to get running properly, they may need call upon our experiences and that at this moment um, the smaller labs are definitely required until they can get up and, and going so I don't know if I'd call it a mechanical or a biological approach we are certainly because we can be we can make some of it in the We've lost your sound. Question uh, of all and, and putting best practice together. Uh, we, lo we lost you right at the end uh, there, but uh, I think we got the gist um, of what you were saying. Um, can I say both to you, Sir Paul, and to you, uh, Steve, we're very grateful uh, for the, the contribution uh, of the industry and of the, the scientific uh, labs across the country to this flotilla of, uh, of small ships, uh, as well as the contribution uh, of the, the big labs. Uh, in half an hour of evidence, you've given us some very important uh, insights that if you can get ahead and anticipate some of, the, uh, some of the work that's needed and some of the installations that are needed, uh, that is evidently a good thing and you evidence that. Uh, we had a, uh, an interesting insight into the decentralized versus uh, centralized uh, approach. Uh, and I think we took some comfort from uh, what Steve Bates uh, said about the, the capacity uh, for us to lay our hands on uh, the necessary uh, reagents uh, and other contributions that we will need to uh, to have the, the quantum of tests that is required. Uh, thank you very much indeed for uh, taking time out to give evidence.